and said that he was a, an automobile salesman and he used to go to the movies very frequently and there were four directors that really impressed him and all of them worked for the World Film Corporation in Fort Lee, New Jersey. Mm. So he decided to switch businesses <coughs> and go and work for the one that he thought was an absolute genius, uh, Maurice Turner. And he found out where he was on location and he turned up and said, I want to work for you and I want to be your assistant <coughs> director. He knew he, Turner had just fired one. So Turner said, and what experience have you had? And he said, I haven't had any experience. He says, well, how can I employ you? He says, well, the fellow you just fired had experience, didn't he? Why don't you train me in your style? And that sold him to Turner. And Turner took him on. He became his assistant director, his editor, his second unit director, and finally making complete films under his supervision. Now, very little is known about Turner. In 1959, I, my mother said, you've got to come on a holiday. You've had too much to do with films. <laughs> so we went to the Lake District, which was very pleasant. It was a boring little town. And um, I suddenly got the idea, perhaps they had a film library here in the old days. And sure enough, they did. It was an optician who ran it. And I went around to his house, and he was on safari in Kenya. He was obviously charging too much. And his housekeeper said, oh, you must come back when he comes back. But that wasn't the weeks. And uh, she showed me the film library. And it consisted of four boxes of 16 millimeters of film. Thing about a polar bear at the zoo, Princess Margaret, Victory Day, and I can't remember the other one, but underneath was a catalogue with a very 1920s design on it. And I pulled the catalogue out, and in there was a list of every 16mm film I dreamt of owning. She said, and I said, what a shame that these have gone. She said, oh no, they haven't gone, they're upstairs. <laughs> but they're very old. <laughs> And I went upstairs, and the entire room was lined with glass-fronted bookcases. Book and instead of books, there were brass cans. And the first one I took said, The Wishing Ring. And I thought, what's that? And underneath it said, An Idyll of Old England. And I put it back in the can, and put it back in the case, because... English silent films were anathema to me. I'd said <laughs> too many, and I certainly didn't want to see this one. When I got back to London, I told Dennis Gifford, who was writing a catalogue of all British silent films, that I had found this one, and he was welcome to it. And when I saw him again, he said, that film you told me about, that's not English, that's American. It's directed by someone called Maurice Turner. I said, oh my. God, how embarrassing. Because even then I was fascinated by Maurice Turner. William K. Everson had written a most marvellous program there, which was so romantic about a film called Lorna Doon uh, that I bought it, bought Lorna Doon, and his program note was better actually. <laughs> but this one turned out to be the only copy in the world, just as the Goose Woman, UCLA told me, was only the second copy in the world. Um, that they had found anyway, and the wishing ring was blown up to 35 millimeter by the Library of Congress, and I showed it at the National Film Theatre in 1960, and it got such a good reception that I was able to write to Maurice Turner <coughs> and tell him how marvelous he was just before he died. I'm showing it to you just the opening because in 1914, when this film was made, which is almost a hundred years ago, just think of it. Films were shot, feature films were shot in master shot, and that's it, the front row of the stalls. But look how Turner plays with the film, look at his sense of humour, and his cameraman, a Dutchman called John Vandenbroek, did an absolutely brilliant job on the cinematography.
So I can imagine Clarence Brown watching this when he was still a car salesman, thinking, I've got to do something about my life and go and join this man.